Oh hey, hi, how are you? Welcome to the So DIY channel. This is the vlog for March 2020, my third ever blog. And my name is Beth, in case you don't know me, I am the sewing pattern designer and blogger at So DIY. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about everything I've been up to or almost everything I've been up to in March 2020. So let's start with patterns. This month, I released an update to the Alley sweatshirt pattern. I'll put a link to the video telling you all about that. This is a pattern that I released a couple years ago. And so the new re-release has expanded sizing and a new gender neutral view and a kangaroo pocket. So to go with the re-release of the pattern and support the existing sew along, I did a few videos in March. The first one was ways that you can sew knits on your conventional sewing machine. So sewing knits without a serger. The second post I did was how to sew a kangaroo pocket, which is this little baby right here. And then I also posted about this hack to the alley sweatshirt. So the pattern comes with traditional long sleeves, but for this one, I did short sleeves, which is really a fun kind of summer spring hack. And if you go over to the blog, you can download the pattern piece for the short sleeve. So you will need the alley sweatshirt pattern, but this little extension for the short sleeve is totally free for you to download. And there are instructions there about how to sew this variation. All right, now we've taken care of all that blog business, all the pattern business. Let's talk about what I've been sewing. So I've been social distancing for about the last three weeks. I'm not sure time is just kind of become a little non-existent these days as every day rolls into the next. Um, so I started a project or kind of restarted a project that I initially started planning back in September and it's for a quilt and it's the freewheeling single girl quilt by Denise Schmidt. And I've been wanting to sew this quilt for like 10 years now. And I have, this is one quarter of a block. So there, there's going to be this and then <laughs> you do three more and you get a full ring. So it's a takeoff on the traditional double wedding ring design of quilts. So I am using up all of my like, vintage kind of scraps of fabric and making these rings and the rings are going to be color blocked. So it's kind of going to be like red, yellow, blue, purple, green and then get go from light at the top to dark and then I'll put like a little uh, mock-up that I did up there. So I've just been working on my yellow and browns and I think maybe I have all of my ring pieces now and I just need to work on putting them into the blocks. So kind of the only fabric that I'm worried about running out of is this white background fabric, but um, I guess if it comes to it, I'll have to order more. I do have a lot of these scraps of like old quilt, quilting cotton, so those will be really great. It's kind of a fun project. I was going at it pretty hard about three, two, two and a half weeks ago, and I took a break, but I think this week I might get back into it a little bit. The next project I made is the Euler Bralette by Sophie Hines, and this is part of my Make Nine list um, and a pattern that I've been wanting to try out because I do like to wear kind of a, a lounge bra bralette on occasion. So I actually can't find it right now. I don't know where it went. I've looked all over, but, um, and I haven't taken a picture. So <laughs> um, this one was kind of disappointing for me. Just the fit didn't work for me. Um, I think it has been successful for other bustier ladies. Um, I wear a 36D and ready to wear bras, but this one, it just, it doesn't feel quite right. I did wear it one evening. I wore it for a number of hours, but um, I just don't like the shape that it does with my boobs. So I'm probably not gonna make it again. Um, this has happened to me before with other lounge bra patterns. They're just not quite what I want. And I think maybe it's just that triangle shape it doesn't really work with my 
breast shape. So I found more success with more of a shelf, um, a shelf bra. So that's probably what I'll go back to and what I'll stick with. Um, anyway, made it. Sorry, I don't have it to show you. I'll try to find it. Um, <laughs> but I, like I, bright side, I checked off one of my boxes for my make nine, but disappointing that I don't think I'll really be wanting to wear that bra a lot. Okay, the next thing I made are the Seamwork Dexter pants. Let me try to show you. I'm wearing these right now, and I know that you maybe can't see them super well, but they are a very slim fit pant. They have a side zipper. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you all around. I know I have panty lines, but I don't care. Um, just at home, <laughs> it's only me and all of YouTube. So these are a pretty cool design. I think it's kind of like a 50s Audrey Hepburn dancing around in Paris kind of thing. They have little pleats right down the center front of each leg and the center back of each leg. So kind of, it's not center front, but down the legs, front and back, um, split hem at the ankle. This is a double knit fabric from Joanne Fabrics. It uses an invisible zip at the side. Overall, they're pretty easy to make. Um, I will eventually do a blog post about them. So these pants I had planned to make and take on a trip with me at the beginning of March. And I was supposed to go to Italy as a 40th birthday trip for myself, but I ended up canceling that. Um, fortunately, I was able to get the majority of my money back. Um, but that was kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. I took a few weeks off from thinking about this project, but went ahead and sewed it because I know eventually I'll get to go, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. So next up to go with these pants, I'm going to make a morning side shirt, and this is a pattern by French Navy, and I'm going to use this fabric. This is a little scrap. I have it cut out. I just need to cut my interfacing and then I can start sewing it. Um, this is fabric that I got in Denmark a few years ago. It's a really nice drapey rayon. Um, so I got to meet Sarah from French Navy when I was in Cape Town in January and she was wearing a Morningside top and I really loved it. And she was very generous to send me the pattern. So that is next up on my sewing table. So I thought I'd share a little bit about what I've been doing at home while I am social distancing. I've been cooking a lot. Um, I found that as I've been at home and not much is going on, food has become that much more important to me. I've been making a lot of soup and a couple of recipes that I've really liked. One was a soup recipe from Julia Child, and it was so easy. It's just eight cups of water, like two large onions, two large potato potatoes, and you boil it all together for a while, and then and then a tablespoon of salt. That's also important. Um, you boil it till everything's cooked, and then use your blender to blend it up. I used an immersion blender. And it was so good. I couldn't believe it for just being that easy. You don't even saute the onions. Just cook everything together, blend it. It's delicious. And it's a base for vichyssoise or other kinds of soups. So you can really take that base recipe and do a lot of variations with it. So I've done it like that. And then I've also done with sweet potatoes, which was really good, but pretty sweet, which I don't love sweet soups, but it definitely works with sweet potatoes and I'm sure other vegetables as well. This weekend I also tried to tried making a Finnish salmon soup that I had when I was in Finland this last summer and it was really delicious and really pretty easy. Again, just like onions, potatoes, salmon, so things that you might have on hand, especially if you have salmon in your freezer. So I will put a link in the show notes to that recipe. Another thing I've gotten really into lately is watching Acorn TV. And it's another TV app, you know, like Hulu or Netflix, but it's all British TV shows. So I've been having a lot of fun watching a lot of different British mysteries because I love to read these books. So it's fun to also watch them on TV. Um, I've been watching the Miss Fisher Mysteries and the Modern Miss Fisher Mysteries. Both of those are really great for fashion. Highly recommend. Super fun fashion. It's really inspiring. And then I've also started watching the Agatha Raisin Mysteries. I've read a lot of those books last year, so it's fun to know, see it 
act it out. <laughs> Another thing that's been keeping me occupied while at home is I've been doing a daily FaceTime fitness with one of my brothers. We call each other every day at noon and just do 15 minutes of exercises and we take turns switching off who decides what exercises we do. So it's different every day. We get to check in. Uh, I highly recommend having a buddy like that and just something that you can do every day and it feels really productive to do a little bit of exercise as well. Now I have a fun little announcement. If you've been following me and my blog for a little while, you re might remember that back in August of 2019, I did a virtual party called the I Love My Fabric Party. And the intent of this party was to spend some time with your stash, show it a little bit of love, and maybe do some organizing. That could be creating a digital catalog or just folding and sorting and getting the stash in order. So I was planning to do it again this year and it seems like now that we're all at home, there's no better time than right now. So I am planning to start the virtual party on April 9, which is a Thursday, and then run it through the Sunday, April 12. So during this time, I'll be posting some tips, sharing some things about my stash, maybe even go live on YouTube or Instagram. Uh, we'll have to see. And I'll also be posting some videos and helpful blog posts about organizing your stash. And you can join in on Instagram by using the hashtag I love my fabric party. So stay tuned to the blog and Instagram for more info about that. If you're looking for ways to support this free content and all my tips and tutorials here on YouTube and the blog, I have started a coffee account. It's ko-fi slash so DIY. And it's just a way that you could buy me a virtual coffee and donate a little bit of money if you found these tutorials helpful. I'm going to put a link down to that in the show notes. Um, any little bit really helps me. So I would really appreciate it if you feel compelled to donate some money. Um, and as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would be so honored if you hit that little subscribe button down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I, re I release a new video. Happy sewing. Bye.